Danny's new car. It's his new fucking car. We're so excited. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> Are you ready? Yeah, I'm ready. All right. Tonight we'll be unveiling two new project cars down here at the garage. First off here, this is my cameraman Dan. You guys never see him because he's usually filming me ramble on with my bullshit, but tonight we're going to be unveiling his brand new 2017 Volkswagen Golf R. He just took delivery of this thing yesterday? Yesterday. Yeah. It's like super fresh. Well, how many miles are I now? 50? 83. 83 freaking miles. It's so fresh you can smell it from here. So Danny bought this car as his new daily driver, right? Yep. He had, he's getting out of a, what is it, 2014 Mercedes? CLA 250? Yeah. So, and you also know Dan's red S2000, uh, it's that AP2, we did the carbon fiber hardtop install. Link here if you want to check that out. Uh, so tell us a little bit about the car. So you were looking for, what was your criteria in a new daily driver? Uh, hashback number one. Yeah. Number two needs to be fun. Always. Three, comfortable. Yep. Yeah. Four, some performance. Maybe 50% of the car needs to be performance. Right. And we always and drive in a boring car on a daily basis. No. And uh, was that number five? I need something automatic or a double clutch because I have a back problem and just moving my hip for the clutch just hurts over time. Old men, we're just fucking getting old. <laughs> Not that old, but yeah, it's catching, it's catching up. Um, so I looked at, uh, I did drive some manuals. So Evo 10, yep. it's hard to find a double clutch to test drive. How do you like the Evo 10? Chassis and driveline, great. Yep. Everything else is like a $15,000 Lancer. The interior is not very nice, huh? Not a pleasant place to be for us. It's, it's fine for what it is, but you're paying 40 grand. They should have wrapped it with leather or, or something, something that you could put, like something that you're you're staring at most of the time. I, you want something nice. I like I like having a clean interior, like, exactly. Because that's where you are most of the time. I mean, exterior looks are just as important, but when you're driving the car and that's what you're staring at all the time, it, it's bad. If, if there's some, if it's a bad interior, it's bad looking. My my bad. That interior was pretty atrocious on the eyes, and I got sick of looking at it. <laughs> I mean, no offense to anybody, that's just our opinion. Like, you're paying 40 grand, you want some better interior. But Don't worry about it, you're gonna offend the internet no matter what. <laughs> so, so, Evo 10. Yep. Uh, yep. What else? Uh, I, my buddy picked up a Focus RS recently. It's got 900 miles on it. I probably, put, I probably put on two, 300 myself. Yep. And not I went for riding this with him also, so I comment a little bit here. It's not a daily. No, a I'll, daily. I'll agree. Um, I agree. It's, it's a flamboyant car. It's loud. It's outside and in. Ex like aesthetics, it's loud. Oh, it's a I, ricer. I have to say that 
this is very sleek and subtle. It's not very, Suing hey, time. look at me. Suing time. But it's very, it's classy. It's yeah. elegant. It's got elegance to it. Sorry. So I drove that a while. The car's fun, but it's loose. They want you to throw the car around, even driving at slow speeds, fast speeds. The car, it is what it is. Exciting, hoonable. That's what oh, Ford advertised it. It they is. Gave it a, they gave it a drift button. Yeah. They, want, they want you. Total hoonable. They want you to blow it up and have them not warranty it. They want you to hit curves. <laughs> Hear that, kids? They want you to hit the curves. Okay. <laughs> Make, make infamy on YouTube. Well, on the side note, I, the car is fun. I like the RS. It's not a daily for me. It's just, again, it, and it's a manual, so I can't. I have to complain about the interior on that thing. That interior is, is I don't know what they do, what Ford uses in those materials, but that base focus, like dash material, the steering wheel is actually a little bit better than the base focus. That, yeah, that has Napa. I once, had, I once had a Focus rental car and the steering wheel felt like it was like made of like Nerf foam. And I, I literally like, I remember there, like sitting there in the car and I was like getting frustrated and angry, just like feeling how chintzy yeah. that thing felt. And the dash plastics are the same thing. They added like some leather touch points in that car. And like, they, I like the, the contrasting stitching. Yeah. But it's still like, they should have wrapped it in leather, like you said, for 40, 40 grand. 40 grand, but. It has an advanced drive line, uh, all wheel drive system. I mean, grant, I mean, granted, the car is purposeful, right? So it, I guess it's minimalistic in a couple ways, but it, it would have been, I would, I would think it would have been a more suitable daily, like having a little bit. Yeah. This interior is very, very, very upscale. Like this is like hot hatch meets European luxury, and it's got that. It, it's really got that like dual purpose. Like it, it, it works. So that's a nice place, the cabin's a nice place to be. You know what, another criteria, I want to be happy inside the car because I'm in it more than I see it. Right, right. So, uh, what else was on your list? Uh, a regular GTI, Mark 7. Yeah. Great car, I, that was probably the one I was gonna get until I work for a, de uh, a dealer which the owner has a Volkswagen brand, franchise. So I took, a, they took a, from auction, a 16 Golf R, yeah. DSG, everything fully loaded, test drove it, had 7,000 miles, that raised the, the green flag, I want to order one. So that was it, you were I sold. didn't test drive anything else, out. I mean I drove other cars but they didn't want to make me get anything else. And this is a DSG car? Correct. But it's a nice transmission. Smooth when you want it, and fast when you want it. Uh, again, 83 miles, I'm not feeling any of the, the clunkiness and traffic yet. Yep. That's something that can be, uh, if you get that, you can just clear adaptations or relearn the transmission while you drive. It's no big deal. I mean, I'm, a, I'm gonna be a manual guy until the day I die, but I get the application, and for, especially like for like a day, you, you sure. deal with traffic and, oh, yeah. 84 is a turd box, <laughs> so. Uh, let's see, color, what made you choose this color? Again, daily, gray will stay clean even if it's dirty. And for the US market, limestone gray metallic only comes on a Golf R. Europe get any GTI or Passat can get that color, so I, I chose that. Uh, for 17, US gets the Paran Paranus wheel? I can't even say the damn name. Pretoria or Pretor something? Pretoria. I don't know. Yeah, we're, we're debating the, the pronunciation Which, uh, for it. Which Europe had in 15 and 16, so Volkswagen decided to give it to us. These are fantastic looking wheels. For, for an OEM vehicle, it's like, I can't believe how nice that, that OEM wheel is. Like, you don't even have to like change the wheels on this. It, it's that good. So originally, when you order a 17, it's loaded. You get deep uh, driver uh, chassis control and nav, and they force the driving assistant package. But through the dealer network, Volkswagen said they, they could take it off. Right. The D DAP package. So it doesn't have it, so the car came early. That crap has no interest to me. Not I don't want it. We got holes in the bumper for the parking sensors, more yeah, gadgets to break. It's just more, it's just more electronic crap on the car. So basically what, what aids this car comes with standard is the adaptive cruise control radar, which also does autonomous braking. Uh, blind spot monitors and uh, rear traffic detection, which the blind spot monitors are used. You know, I gotta say it's like a like a 
touch that I appreciate is I like a lot of the gloss black accents on the car. The mirrors, the door pillars, and even, even the front grille. It's like a just nice, it's got that nice gloss black. It looks elegant, it looks purposeful. Classic, even. Grown up. It is grown up. Grown so up. This, this definitely is like a grown up man's hot hatch. The business, it's a hot hatch for the business, man. Real quick, the only car I didn't drive was an STI, and that was hard to find one newer used to drive. Yeah. I didn't want to hit up the forums and ask for strangers to drive that piece of shit. <laughs> Sorry. It's the misfiring, it's, misfiring it's, flat. Yeah, it's like the Evo. Drive line's fine. I just the flat H. I'm not. A, I'm not a flat engine guy. Sorry, anybody who's into them. So, so the car has nav. It's it's pretty much a fully loaded GTI with. All wheel drive and more horsepower. So, worthy successor to the your CLA. I'll be beyond. beyond. Like this, I compared it this rides like an S class. It is nice, but without the body roll, it's nice. So, we're gonna have some projects for this. Not anything crazy, right? But we're gonna we'll do some stuff going forward after you get through the break-in period, which we got another 920 miles. I would say, give me a month. <laughs> that long? Well, it's, I do 26 miles a day. I'm not just going to take the car out. Just go take it out on a weekend. They're going to want to see more. <laughs> so we'll get it out for a full driving impression. Maybe not a track impression, but we'll get it on the road and give you feedback for that. And let's talk a little bit about your S2000. S2000 uh, had to go, right? Sad but true. And uh, I think maybe it went to a decent home now. I think so. You know, uh, nobody wants to see a legendary FR car go to waste. So, you know, sometimes you just gotta kind of pony up and bite the bullet and make stuff happen. So this way, we can keep the project alive and you guys can look forward to, to a full build on this going forward. Uh, I think this will be great with the, my AP1 also. Uh, I'm gonna set that, now that I have two, I'm gonna set that one, my AP1 up more for track day stuff. And this will be the, the street hooner, hopefully. Uh, so we're gonna do some, a lot of uh, experimenting with suspension, tire packages, and uh, I'm actually looking forward to doing some natural aspirated development on the 2.2. My uh, AP1 has some natural aspirated mods, head shave, cams, valve train, all the bolt-ons in a standalone, just like the uh, my my 99 Miata, but without the ITBs. Although that's something I do want to do going forward. Uh, that car put down 232 with the wheels. We'll get into that more as we go forward with uh, more stuff on it. But uh, yeah, what can I say? I have I have a lot of doubles. I like I like doubles of things. So why not have a second S2000 too? Done. Thank you.